Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, April 3rd, 2020, and this is our weekly video, a regular look back and see how things went on eBay last week, what went on at Catawiki, what's happening on the Bitamount site. We've, we've, we've done a number of things on there that we'll go through with you. Uh, we, we've had a lot of time lately uh, to do things because obviously the whole country, is, whole world is more or less on vacation or shut down trying not to get sick. Uh, let's hope we all stay that way. All right. One of the things I wanted to mention was that uh, on uh, on the uh, uh, global member pages, the major auction houses are, for the most part, shut down at this point, other than they may do some online sales. Um, I don't think they've quite worked that out yet. But live auctioneers and valuable and bid squares still loading in auctions, which is quite encouraging. And uh, if you if you hop over uh, to the pages, you're going to find on, on 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 them right now a very good auction of uh, Japanese ivory, Meiji period uh, uh, ivory Netskis and so forth is taking place over in the EU. There's some nice Shibuyama pieces in there, some good mixed metal works and so forth. And uh, if you scroll past that section, there's some very nice uh, export pieces coming up over there, as well as a lot of Wan Lee pieces, for some reason, are turning up on the market right now. Some great pieces. There's some nice Kang Shi examples, as you can see. This is a huge page. I can't go through it all. There's, there's hundreds and hundreds of things on here that we've found and uh, put up. So if you're on there this weekend and you're a Japanese buyer, do check out that uh, that uh, auction. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was that earlier this week, or yesterday rather, we started working on it on, on Monday, was uh, that the video that we talked about doing on uh, late Qing porcelain and comparing them to earlier uh, original examples, what to look for, what the foot rims look like. Uh, and we did a few side-by-side -side comparisons. And uh, if you haven't checked those yet, uh, check it here on YouTube. Uh, and uh, see, see if you find it helpful. A lot of people seem to like them, and uh, we'll continue to do them in the future. All right. Uh, we like doing them. They're fun to do. It's fun to getting all the pictures together and orchestrating it and, um, you know, moving it ahead, so to speak. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was that on the home page, um, in the yellow, oh, one of the things we did add for the, uh, we added a button this week for the global member access page. So once you sign in and sign up, you can just click that button and you don't have to use the drop down menus. And a couple of people asked if we could do that, and I said, sure, why not? Um, one of the things that we've uh, done, uh, as we mentioned last week, if, if you missed it, um, we've added a, the uh, Philadelphia Museum of Art um, onto the drop down menus, and we have set up um, subsections. For each each department, the Philadelphia Museum of Art has done a really great job of putting their collection online. There's a lot of good Japanese ceramics on there, hundreds and hundreds of pieces, as well as a lot of fine Chinese material, and um, and then we of course have have the uh, all the drop downs for the other the Palace Museum collection, the National Palace Museum collection, the Smithsonian, and so forth. So you want to check those out, and we'll be adding we'll be adding to these boxes as we come across sites that seem to have what we want uh, as far as uh, uh, things go. And the other thing I wanted to mention, we did add this week additionally some uh, new books to the bookcase because we don't have any auction catalogs, so we're go scouring around finding good articles and papers and whatnot. And um, one of them is the first one here. It's on fakes. And um, it's sort of how to, how to examine fakes, what if, you know, when are reproductions, re reproductions intentionally to deceive and all this sort of thing. And the other thing that we got was this, was a really nice uh, uh, a pamphlet. It's 29 pages, well illustrated, of the Habsburg, uh, Spain, the collection of Chinese porcelain in Habsburg. Uh, it's very good by Sinta Cray. Uh, excellent uh, um, article and uh, nicely illustrated. And the other thing we added was this, The ja the Birth of Japanese Porcelain by uh, Michael Butler. It's a lecture transcript, 15 pages long, and it's about the origins of Japanese Arita rare, uh, how they got into production, how they sourced their clay, uh, what the influences were from Korean potters that were brought over to work there and porcelain makers and so forth. Very interesting article, okay? And then there are all the other papers we published in the last week uh, for everyone. I think we've done uh, 15 or 20 of them at this point. And, and I hope you, you enjoy them and, and you use them. All right, now let's take a, a wander over here to last week's uh, eBay uh, Today page, I mean the eBay auction page and the Katowiki pages. 
Um, there was quite a bit of stuff on here. Some of the pieces did really, really well, and some of the pieces slipped through the cracks because I think people are um, maybe holding off on leaving bids and then walking away and forgetting about it. And before we get into it, a couple of a couple of pieces to avoid this week. One of them is this. This is a, a vase, uh, a moon flask that claims to have Sotheby's provenance. Doesn't mean Sotheby's didn't sell it. They might have thrown it in one of their arcade sales. Uh, it's up to $257. It's listed as a mark and period moon flask. It is not, everything this, this particular seller has, he says, is mark and period. It is not mark and period. This is a fake. Um, it's a 20th century uh, moon flask. Uh, it, it, is, it is not right. And it seems to be getting traction. And I'm, I'm, I hope none of you are participating in this. There is a Sotheby's tag in the photo. But this is not an early piece. They may have, they had, they used to do these arcade sales where they just sort of throw leftover goods into large lots and sell them, you know, you know 10 or 15 things at a time. And I suspect that's where this came from. And the fellow, the same seller is Hexdon1225. And uh, if you have him on your watch list, take him off. Everything he sells that I can see so far is a fake. And the other piece that jumped up that seems to be getting uh, attraction as well is this, a Chinese famille rose uh, reticulated tray. This is a brand new tray. It has absolutely no age to it. And it's rather interesting looking, uh, the way they laid it out. They said, but the images on here, the figures almost look like they were put on with a stencil. Uh, it's, very, it's a very peculiar piece of porcelain. It is not old. It has no age at all. Um, here's a picture of the bottom of it. It has this very bizarre uh, decoration on the back of it. If I, let me find a better picture. Here it is. There it is. All right. And it is uh, ink decorated or stamped or something on the back. Um, uh, so if you're, you've got this on your watch list or you're thinking of putting a bid on it, don't. The seller is, um, uh, what is his name? Eric Tip Tipton. Uh, I don't know who he is, but this is not an old piece. Um, this is a, a new piece of porcelain. I don't know whether he, he knows it or not. He may not. All right, now over here, uh, some things that sold on eBay this week, uh, this past week. And, and, and among them are these, these very nice um, standing Guanyin figures holding lotuses uh, in, in pink quartz. These are most likely late 19th or early 20th century. The dating on them isn't all that critical with these. It's it more, more uh, typically influenced by the quality of the carving. And the quality of carving on these was very, very good. They have later mounts. Most likely these were lamps or, or, or stands to be uh, fitted as, uh, to be used as lamps. I would guess, but uh, there's the, the the carving, and if you bothered to look at these, you'll see the carving quality was really good on these. The, these had beautiful carving. And they're nice size, seven eight inches tall, and they sold for three hundred ninety three dollars, which I think was a pretty good buy. I think it's a very nice buy, actually. They're very pretty. And then on to this, a, a nice Chinese export lacquered uh, fan with uh, figural scenes across the top and the outer panels and then a, a sort of cartouched enclosed uh, landscape scene. Uh, nice quality work, very good detail. And I didn't see a lot of wear on this. This fan looked to be in quite good condition all the way around. I don't, no edge chipping. You know, when you see these old fans, you always want to check them for edge chipping because they tended to get roughly treated. This has just one tiny one up in here it looks like and that's about it which is nothing for one of these and it sold well it did pretty well it brought six hundred and seventy dollars but it was a nice piece of chinese export probably done in the 1830s or 40s or so all right and then on to this this is one of these femi ver later 19th century mallet bases and I wanted to show this to everyone because I had mentioned yesterday that most of the later mallet bases um, have, have inappropriately shaped bodies and that the upper section of the neck here tends to have a rather angled out flange, not this squared off top. But I said there are always exceptions. This is one of the exceptions. This thing is properly potted, even at the bottom, the way they taper it in. It's done very nicely. The problem is, is that when you flip it over and you see the bottom of the thing and you look at examine that foot rim, it's got that sort of grainy, gritty, uh, not that ultra smooth ivory uh, bottom that you want to see on these. It's clearly a, a, a mid to late 19th century vase. 
it is not 18th or 19th century. The seller thought it might have been, which is, I think, an honest mistake on these. They're, they're, a lot of people have a hard time dating them. But this vase is, is, uh, is, is not an 18th century vase, or, a or it's probably mid to late 19th century. And it ended up selling for over $3,000, which means it probably got glommed onto by people that actually know, and uh, they just like the vase. It's very classically done in the Kung Shi style, very, very much so, but it is not. But it was a fairly good size. It was a little over around 13 inches tall with good decoration. I think that drove the price on that. All right, and then on to this. This was a nifty set of, uh, of, of, of uh, late Qing drawings that was in an album. I thought this was just great. And uh, the, the quality of the painting on these is very good, showing all these uh, Chinese beauties as they were. And uh, the, the one I showed initially, I think, was the best one. I love her face. Great facial expression. And she's presenting. She's got her hands wrapped in silk, and she's pre presenting. It looks like an incense burner or, or a gift box to someone. Uh, just a beautiful set of drawings. And they did fine. They brought $2,379, which is not uh, unexpected at all for this. This was a nice album. They were signed, and uh, they did very well. And I hope, I hope whoever got them pays for them and and uh, enjoy some. They're really good. If I bought them, I'd, I'd get them all framed, make a, make a wall of them. All right, now on to this was the, uh, the Sikh Kisi of, of, of an immortal. Uh, this was uh, sold by Joni's up in Canada. This was a nice one. They had a couple of these up. It looked like it had maybe a little, a little color loosening here. Maybe not. It may have been intentional. But these are nice old ones. They're late Ching. Uh, judging by the appearance and the facial expressions and the colors and the way it's drawn and so forth. The, these were fairly popular. And it sold for $899. And another one, um, I'm not going to do them both, but another one very similar sold for about 900 and change. So that's sort of the price range for those. And then, oh, oh here is here is the other one. <laughs> I did include it. Okay. Anyway, there he is. This is a picture of an immortal floating on clouds. It had a little water damage up in here, as you can see, but the work was very good. The quality of the work was quite good, and it sold for, as I said, a little over $900, $929. Nice looking thing. And then on to this. This was that Chinese uh, enamel export uh, plate. It's a 18th century example, probably. Uh, nicely done. Here's the back of it. it. Looked to be in fairly good condition all the way around. It's got sort of a, this weird apocryphal, uh, this weird sort of strange Jin Lung mark on it. But um, the the work was nice, and it was interesting because the figure is is, is a Chinese robed figure, but the face she, she looks very European. Um, and, and most of these, a lot of these were exported uh, to, the, to the West. It sold for $1,026, which isn't bad. All right, and then there was this very nice pair of late 18th century armorial blue and white with enamel uh, shaped rim dishes. These were very pretty. These were a really pretty pair of dishes. And uh, they ended up selling for $455. I think that was um, a great buy. I think that was a fabulous buy for these. Um, and the shipping on them wasn't that, uh, not too disastrous from, from uh, Canada here. It was only 25 bucks. Those were nice. And uh, also was this, this uh, Mandarin decorated uh, mid to late 19th century vase. Had a little nick out of the rim at the top, but overall it was in, in, in pretty good shape um, here and here and here. And uh, let me see. There we have a nice uh, look at the uh, decorations, how the figures are done. Typical uh, latter 19th century uh, enameling, a little heavy, uh, but, but overall quite good. And it sold reasonably, $420, not bad. That was a good buy. And then this, if you were a Chinese export lacquer collector, this was a great game box. Uh, counter, counter and game box. It had the, the slides in it to put in playing cards. Uh, it was a quite complete box. The, it was monogrammed. Um, here are the card holders. Uh, probably made around 1840 to 1860, mid-19th century, but very fine lacquer. Well, it might be a little earlier than that. This is a nice old one. Uh, tiny couple of bumps on the corners, but nothing significant. This was a heck of a nice table box, and it sold for $416. That was an absolute steal. Um, if you're looking for an area to collect, I think Chinese export lacquer right now is a great place to look because it, it, it doesn't seem to get any interest at all from collectors in China. None. They have no interest in these at all. I don't think, I don't think half the people in China even know what they are. 
Um, these were made solely for export to the, to, the, to the EU, to South America, Mexico, the United States. All of these, these boxes were made and exported around the world, and virtually none of them stayed in China. And as a result, there's not a lot of interest there because they, they just don't have them in their culture. And I'm trying to think how big this was. A pretty good size. Um, uh, yeah, 14 by 12 inches. This isn't a small box. This is a nice size table box. There's a good view of it there. And uh, it ended up selling very reasonably, $416. And then on to this, the Kisi uh, throne back or chair back cover. It's a nice one. Um, it's done in the Ming style. I think it's a little later, but it's very much done like a Ming example. Um, right here, it has that big, the big black uh, lotus rue head cartouche and the waves and, and all the other business. Uh, and uh, it ended up selling for $3,385. Not a bad price. That's a, but the, the work on it was very good. I don't think it was 18th or 19th century. I think it was a little later, but, but beautiful quality. And then on to this, the Femi June Famille Rose Garden Barrel. This was very pretty. This was a nice big garden barrel. Uh, the, 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 the enamels were nice and strong on it. The top of it was in good condition with dragonflies and lotuses and so forth. The, uh, the, 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 the phoenix, was, or the peacock, was beautifully done. The trees were all nicely enameled and so forth. Here's the bottom of it. Pretty typical forming. All of the bottoms of these garden barrels are done basically the same. There's a way of doing them, and this is how they're nearly always done. And it did pretty well. It brought $2,183. But it was a heck of a nice garden barrel. And then on to this, the, uh, another piece of enamel on copper, 18th century, uh, with uh, uh, figures in uh, outdoor scenes. Here they are playing Go, uh, the Chinese uh, board game. And there's some other groups, uh, people just standing around in this very sort of uh, idyllic landscape setting. Somebody's bringing in a box of, uh, of books to, uh, for somebody there to read, scholars, which is a, t a common thing to see uh, servants and children carrying on, on porcelains and on enamels. You'll see them carrying either vases like this, or you'll see women carrying vases or boys carrying vases with flowers in them. They'll be carrying jade books. Sometimes they're carrying teapots or fans. Uh, and it's just a, sort of an illustrative look at how life uh, w would be if, if everything was perfect in the world um, in China at the time. At any rate, it, this sold for $1,009, which was a pretty good price. And uh, then on to this, the big rose mandarin um, uh, vase, rather unusually shaped one, sort of a, an elongated pear shape with a chimera in relief wrapping around the neck of it. The enamels are good, strong, and bright. Uh, the, the overall, the piece was in fairly good, it looked to be in very good condition. Uh, here's a good detail shot of the figures. Now, the, f the decoration here is very, very good. So when you see decoration that's this good, you generally can predate it prior to 1850. It's when the better examples were made. Lots of gold highlights in the hair, as they say. There are, people are always talking about the gold highlights. This had lots of it. And over here, I love this. I love the hanging basket. Um, uh, this is the, the famous basket you see in 18th century paintings all the time is the centerpiece in, in plates and um, they would they would uh, then frame it somehow but lots of flowers coming out but this form basket and it's it's a hanging basket and you can see it's hanging from here there's a silk thread coming down and then there's another there's a needlework hanging at the bottom of it lots of interesting detail on this this was a good looking thing here's the side panel rather typical <clears throat> there's the front of it okay <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. That is a cold. That is not the big V. Okay, now let's uh, move on here. That sold for $1,600. Not a bad price. Not a bad price. And then on here we have this, this very nice late uh, Meiji period mixed metal uh, vase. I love the shape of this. It had a very nice shape, very tall, very proportional. The drawings, uh, the drawing on it, the artwork on it, it all uh, suits the shape very, very well, which is important. Here's a picture of the size of it so you know it's probably seven or eight inches tall. And uh, it ended up selling fairly reasonably, $169. Not bad. That was, a, that was a very nice buy. If you like Japanese uh, cloisonne, that was a good one. And then over on Katawiki, there was this. This was a very nice Femi Ver uh, plate. Uh, it was about seven or eight inches wide. It had, had, the, had the blackbirds on it and uh, the very s typical central scene uh, with a balustrade in the, in the lower portion and then flowers and birds and sort of a nice garden scene. And uh, it was very well done. And it did pretty well. It ended up selling for $545. 
All right. Um, and again, on Catawiki, uh, we, we, when we put the Catawiki listings on the pages, we're focusing as much as we can on items without reserves. All right. Uh, uh, we do include some of the ones that have reserves lower down the page, but we're trying to include mostly unreserved items because bidding against reserves is too frustrating, and, and uh, the sellers uh, that are using Catawiki are not doing themselves any favor by putting big, big reserves on things. You want to build up a following. And then, and, then, and then maybe you won't get quite as much, but once you have a big following, you do very well. You don't need reserves, and it becomes a steady uh, sales uh, uh, situation for, for dealers and collectors wanting to sell things. All right, now on to this, the lighthouse form, late 18th century orange sepia decorated teapot with strap handle. How's that for a mouthful? Okay, that's a good teapot. A lot of these were exported to Europe. They turned up in America eventually, uh, quite collectible. And uh, this one went very reasonably, $300 for it. It had an old repair to the spout, but it wasn't a big repair. And um, the, the seller did include a lot of photographs of it, and I think, I think that was a good buy. And then this, the uh, Quan John Ware uh, uh, desk box. This was a nice one. And for some reason, he didn't include the calligraphy as the primary shot um, on this. I don't know quite why, but uh, he should have. Uh, he should have had a, a montage shot showing the, 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 the uh, landscape scenes and this and, and the calligraphy because that's what sells them. That's what makes Quan John Wares bring a lot of money is whenever they have script on them. Um, at any rate, this was a nice little box. It did pretty well. I think it would have done a little better. It brought $491, um, which is perfectly fine. But uh, when you're shooting these things, the selling point on these old porcelains are the, is the script half the time. It, has a, it impacts the price by 40%. All right, and then on to this, that lovely pewter opium tray. I like this a lot. I thought this was a very nice little opium tray. Uh, beautifully decorated, probably done in Swato. And then ex and, and, and distributed from there. There's the mark on it, and uh, here's the a good detail of the decoration. It was beautifully done, and in the end, it did pretty well. It brought five hundred and twenty dollars. Uh, opium uh, accoutrement collectors uh, are, are, are always active. Uh, lamps and one thing or another, and, and they'll go after things that are of good quality and pay good money for them. Often these trays are just sold as oddball pewter trays, and nobody knows what they're really for. These were for these were for opium, and uh, the small porcelain trays that we're gonna we're gonna see one in a minute um, is also it was also originally a little opium tray. In most cases, sometimes they use them for other things, but typically it was for opium. And then onto this, that lovely uh, the the picture of the woman uh, seated in the garden playing a zither. I just love this little painting. I thought it was very very nice. It had a tiny bit of discoloration here, which I think a good restorer could get out, and um, a paper restorer. And here's the here's a detail shot. Notice the incredibly slender, almost needle-like fingers of the uh, of of the of the musician. Uh, the nice ink work all around her, uh, filling in the scene, signed and sealed. Um, in the in the, in the corner and the upper on the right side, and in the end it did pretty well. It brought eight hundred and seventy dollars, which I think is a very fair price, and uh, and I think whoever got it got themselves something very nice. All right, and then on to here. These were sort of bargains for the week. These are a nice pair of 1780s uh, garniture uh, vases. These, as you know, many of you know, these were made in sets with um, uh, uh, covered jars of similar shape or five of them, and they'd be placed on mantles. And these two are interesting because they have the same central scene, but they have different secondary scenes. I suspect that these did not start out life together. I suspect they were from two different sets and they got paired up somehow, which is fine. I think it makes it interesting that you can have uh, two different examples. And uh, at any rate, they went for $565, which I think is very reasonable because in the past we've seen single vases of these sell for uh, uh, five to seven hundred dollars for one. And uh, for the, to get two of them for that price is very, very reasonable. And again, I think it's because people have their minds are on other things right now and they're not on eBay looking at things and uh, so forth. So if, if, you, if, you, if you're not familiar with us uh, and, and, you, and you are an eBay buyer, uh, come over to bidamount.com, subscribe for the weekly newsletter. It's free. We'll let you know when we update the page. And we put things on there that we pick out uh, for, for people to buy. And we don't own them. It's not our stuff or anything like that. It's just something we do. 
All right, and then on to this, this really interesting uh, late, late Ching uh, Famille Rose vase. And when I first looked at this, I was wondering how old it really was because the yellow on it was that nice, clear yellow that you typically see on solid mo on monochrome Femi June pieces. And here they just use it to highlight it, but it was very successful. And when you blow up the picture, you, you get a good, a good look at the faces, a good look at the faces and the way the script is added here. A lot is going on in this face. It's not immediately noticeable. Here's the uh, side with all the precious objects. Um, it sort of looks very similar to the late 19th century pieces we talked about yesterday in the, uh, in, in the late Qing video. It had been drilled once and made into a lamp, but uh, there's the bottom of it with that, that sort of grungy, sandy-looking foot to it. But at any rate, this was an interesting little pot. And uh, here it is. And it ended up selling, I think, pretty reasonably, $285. Um, I think that was a very nice little buy. Uh, he thought, the seller thought it was probably Gongshu period. It could well be. Uh, it was, uh, how big was this thing? It was good size. It wasn't tiny. 17 inches tall. That's what I thought. It was a good size thing. It would make an elegant lamp. If you bought it and you think it, you might need a table lamp, boy, just relamp it. You won't hurt it. It's already been drilled. All right, and then on to this, the, uh, the circular fan painting, uh, late Qing dynasty of a, of, a, of a man being greeted that's being carried in a, in a, in a, in a sedan with uh, uh, somebody here with the, uh, with the Buddhist umbrella hanging around him and so forth. And this did quite well. It brought $656. It was slightly faded. Uh, our friend Will Godrevy over in the UK had this, but it was a nice thing. He finds good things. He has a good eye. And then on to this, uh, Katawiki had this nice little Kangxi plate of the, uh, of, of, uh, the sort of Eliza figure sitting next to a palm tree, uh, nicely decorated, and it went for a good price. It brought $702. I think it's because the scale of the figures are larger than you typically see, and it made it interesting to a collector. And it was also Mark and Period on the back. I should have mentioned that, too. All right, but it was a nice-looking plate, and the Mark does help. All right, and now on to this. This was on uh, on eBay. This was a rather nice uh, straights porcelain cobalt ground for Milrose decorated teapot, a compressed form, classical sort of 18th century shape that were produced in uh, all kinds of Mill Rose examples from the Yongchen period on, as well as Yixing, and here it is uh, being done in straights porcelain. Um, a very nice piece, and it did well. It brought $2,500, and this was also from Will over in the, over in the UK. Uh, the seller's name is Godrevy8. And uh, then on to this. This was two of these. This is a strange thing. The fellow had two of these. They are a pair, um, and I'm not quite sure why he split them up. Doesn't, I, I don't understand that. If you have a pair, don't split them up. All right, you're not going to drive higher prices because somebody wants a, people love pairs. Um, let them compete for them as a pair. Do not sell one separately, hoping that'll drive up the price for the next one. It's not how it happens. What happens is you get lukewarm bidding on the first one, and if you don't get it, you have no interest in buying the second one if you're a pair buyer. So you're out. All right, always include pairs together, sell them together. Unless one is so horrifically damaged, no one's going to really want it. All right, but if they're both in good shape, sell them together. And this was a, v a very nice uh, uh, later Japanese uh, cloisonne uh, uh, dish, and it ended up selling for $116, which wasn't a lot. Very reasonable price. It was 12 inches in diameter. And then the guy, had, had the same seller, had this. This is clearly the mate to it. Um, it, it sold separately, and... Um, 12 inches in diameter, same rim, same central scene with slight, these, these are called complementary pairs, by the way. Um, when, when you have a pair that are s extremely similar, like, like that one and this one, they look virtually identical, except the birds are positioned slightly differently. Here they are focused uh, to the right, and here they are focused to the left, and they're called, that's uh, technically a mirrored pair. And um, uh, they, it was, they were broken up, I don't know why. At any rate, the second one, what did it bring? $66, all right? Uh, had the pair been sold together, and also the shipping costs you have to take into account because uh, uh, it costs, you know, in this case, $29 to ship one plate to us from the UK, but they could ship two of them probably for 35 all right? So the, the guy should have sold them as a pair. I don't know why they didn't. They're, they're good dealers. 
but that's what they did. They sold, we sold, we helped them sell some Japanese Amari, that Japanese Arita wear that was on last week. There was buy it now. So I guess I got an email saying they sold a couple of them because of the of our, our watchers. They were good deals. So good, good. I'm glad somebody bought them. All right, and then on to this. This very nice late 18th century uh, brown dressing on the rim. Um, a shaped deer pattern dish. This is a famous pattern and, and in this form, this particular lozenge or oval shape with the shape room with the spotted deer and the lake and the landscapes and the pine trees. All of that is fairly classical. It was a popular pattern. It was a well-known stock pattern. Here's the back of it, unglazed, with tiny bits of kiln grit and so forth. And uh, the plate just sold for just $208, which is very reasonable, very reasonable for that. It's a nice piece of blue and white. And then on to this, the Kangxi styled um, a jar with uh, with uh, uh, plum blossoms and uh, uh, precious objects within a scene here. This was not a Kangxi pot. This was a later pot, uh, late 19th century. And uh, if you watched the video yesterday, you'll see this burnt red area here and this sort of gritty foot, very un Kangxi, as they say. All right, but it was a nicely decorated pot. There's nothing wrong with it, and it brought the right money. It brought the right price. It ended up selling for $643, which is perfectly fine. It was 10 inches tall, too, so it was a nice size, a nice-looking pot. Not criticizing it. And then on to this. This was a remounted inkwork. Uh, the guy had two of them up. It had been remounted on this. Um, but it, was, it looks like an old, uh, sort of a later 19th century inkwork painting. This was a style of uh, brushwork that was done uh, uh, sort of in the mid and late 19th century. Uh, the, the, the trees were sort of dappled on and so forth. And this went very reasonably. $20.00. Okay, so if you looked at this last week and said, boy, I kind of like that, I'll, I'll wait and come back. Well, a lot of people didn't do it, and uh, somebody bought it for 20 bucks plus 20 odd dollars in shipping. But this was a nice old scroll. It had been, um, it looks like it might have had some um, um, uh, relining or something on it, and it's mounted. They also photographed it against a whiteboard background so it would stand out, which gives the impression that that, that is part of the scroll. It's not, those are just whiteboards. But it looks like maybe it had a cloth back added to it at some point. But that was fine. And then on to this, the calligraphy uh, uh, dish with the Famille Rose uh, decoration. This was a rather good one. It had the sort of apocryphal uh, uh, chin lung mark on it. It was probably, an early, like I said last week, it was probably an old one, um, you know, later 19th, uh, uh, late 18th, early 19th century example with a chin lung mark in, a, in this red back. Had a nick out of the rim, and it still brought $1,000 on the nose. It was a nice piece. This was sold by somebody in Portugal, seller over there. All right, and then on to this was this. This was over on uh, Katawiki. This was a re we featured this last week because I just loved the way the guy's face looks. Very finely detailed, beautiful eyes, nice deep brows. Loved the, the style of the hair, and he's sitting here with his sake bottle and a tray of food. He's having he's having his dinner. Just a nice scene, and this did pretty well. It ended up selling for five hundred dollars. Doesn't show the price. I wonder why. Oh, the reserve price was not met. Never mind. Again, somebody put a big reserve on it. Five, it was up to 500 and I thought that was the selling price. It's too bad because that's about what it was worth. I don't know what the guy reserved it for. Uh, all right, here we are. The uh, This is closing um, in the next day or two. This was that very nice Chinese export lacquered uh, 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 table tray. This is a good one. This is a really nice tray. And uh, if, you're, if, you're, if you remember what I just said about Chinese lacquer, export lacquer, here's another example of it. Beautiful tray, beautiful detail, lots of work in it. And um, it closes on Sunday. It's up to $182. You want to check that out. And then, um, and then these were, were sold last week. These were our friend Josh up in, in uh, New Hampshire had these up. He had a big sale up. This was Juice 1499. This very nice pair of late Ming aubergine and turquoise foo lions. They were seven or eight inches tall, but very nice examples. These were quite good. I like the fact that they, the, 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 the foo lions that were sort of made more muscular than they typically do. Often they look sort of fat. These two look sort of lean and mean. Um, you can even see their ribs are a little emaciated, very strong um, uh, uh, heads the way they're done. And uh, these ended up selling for $710, which I think was very reasonable. Those were nice. They were striking. And then, oh, there's the, uh, there's the uh, thing with that, that figure again. Okay, it didn't sell. I'm surprised. 
All right. Again, if you're selling over there in the Netherlands um, on Katowice, don't kill your sales by putting big reserves on things. Sell it, all right, or put a fixed price on a website somewhere. You're not doing yourself any favors. All right. Um, as you can tell, I'm not a fan of reserves. That's because I was an auctioneer for 20 years and heard the most ridiculous arguments in the world for high auction, high reserves. They're never a good idea. All right, now let's take a look at what's coming up. All right, this is this will be on uh, eBay this week uh, on the Today Pay on the on the uh, eBay auction uh, page this week on bid amount. This is a very nice uh, 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 lotus molded uh, Wanli dish with a falcon or a hawk in the middle of it. It's rather cool, I like that, and uh, it's up to. Uh, what's it up to? It's up to $22.50, and it's got uh, eight days to go. That'll be on the newsletter page this week. And then this. This is a pretty rare thing. Uh, this is uh, enameled Chinese silver. Uh, very classical uh, scene. The, uh, the, the enamel work is uh, done uh, like, almost like cloisonne, but it's raised off the surface and then filled in, out, uh, framed in silver, and then filled in with colored enamels. And these are f pretty rare. You do not turn up often. It is marked on the bottom. You'd have to look up to see who the maker was. Notice how they did this flower here with all the little silver wire work in here. A very, very elegant thing. It's up to $339. It's had 13 bids, and it's only been on for a few hours. This is going to do well, if you know what these are. I was at an auction a number of years, not that many years ago, and they had a Chinese export silver or Chinese silver enameled teapot, and I think it went for $18,000 at the time. But it was quite a good one. It belonged to Crosby Forbes, who was the uh, curator of the Forbes Museum, the Peabody Essex Museum, and he wrote the book on Chinese silver. And he owned, as far as I know, just one piece of this. Maybe he owned more that he donated at some point. But at any rate, that's it was a nice piece of silver. If you collect silver, Chinese silver, that's a good thing to collect. And then on to this. This is a nifty little set of four cups and saucers. I know a lot of you collect cups and saucers. And here you have a fairly uh, nice-looking assemblage of 1780s Chinese export porcelain. Uh, typical scenes. These are all sort of stock patterns. But you get four cups and four saucers. Not bad. They're up to $94. They ought to do a bit, quite a bit better than that. And they close on Monday. And then on here is this nice uh, export terrine, 18th century export terrine uh, with, with a crest on it and boar's head handles uh, for the European market. Here's a picture of the bottom of it. It does have a line in the body here. But this is a nice European market uh, 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 terrine. It's up to $56. It closes in a few days. If you like a nice big piece or you're looking for a great terrine to serve food in when you have guests, once the epidemic is over, you can have that. All right, now let's see. Uh, here we have a nice little armorial 18th century European market um, cup and saucer, as is, because it's got some nicks and it's got a little break on the side here. You see that? But if you collect armorial pieces, you might want to check this out. Look up, look up the, the crest to see who it is and see, see how much of it's around. It may be a rare bird. That's the thing with armorial pieces. And then onto this is the, uh, the big uh, juglet. This thing isn't quite as big as it looks. It looks enormous in the picture. It's nine inches tall, but it's a nice 18th century export piece. It's got an old sort of amateurish repair up in here, which you can get cleaned up for not a lot of money because most of it's all there. It just has to be colored in. And uh, this is up to just $16, and that'll be in the newsletter page. It should bring several hundred, uh, but we'll see. All right, leave a bid on things. I've said it a million times. Leave a bid for heaven's sakes, because uh, I know some of you. I've gotten emails from people saying, "Oh, I was going to bid on that and I didn't." Just leave a bid, and then it's on your radar, and you're not going to miss out on it. It doesn't have to be the winning bid right away. Just put a bid on it, just to get it in there. All right, this was a nice uh, linen ground um, uh, rank badge. They, it's called these summer rank badges because they were woven on this sort of light linen. They also made robes out of this same material. Um, very nicely done. Nice border. It's like a third or fourth rank badge. And uh, it's up to just $100. It closes on Sunday. So if you're a rank badge buyer, that's sort of an interesting one because right, it's on a gauze ground. And then this. This is, I had, we had talked about the uh, uh, pewter uh, opium tray. Here's a porcelain one. All right. Very, this one has a battle scene on it. Late 19th century. Very much, the decoration is very much like that vase we had just talked about. That sort of heavy, thick enameling from uh, the late 19th century. Here's a picture of the underside. Here it is again. All right. 
And now a lot of the porcelains weren't, weren't used for opium. They were, they were made in the form of opium trays because the, the, they were producing lots of them and the shape was popular. But they did use some of these as trays. Um, and that's what it was, you know, in, 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 the, the form is for. All right, and then this. This is um, um, something that came up today. I think it looks pretty good. It's a Yuzhao uh, Sung uh, uh, Celadon. I, I don't know the seller, but this is a pretty good looking bowl. Um, the, I like the, the bottom on it. I like the glaze on it. And uh, it looks pretty good. It looks like it's got some legitimate uh, bits of wear and things happening on the inside. The, the, the carving, uh, the outlining looks pretty good. And we'll see how that does. It's got three days to go. It's up to $503. And I don't know the seller, SW12003. They're in the, in the Carolinas somewhere. All right. And they have a bunch of things up, also including this, this very nice uh, uh, seven, 16th or 17th century uh, uh, blue and white uh, Wan Li uh, or, or maybe transitional period plate. Here's the, here's the bottom of it. It's got, the, uh, it's got a Jai Jing mark on it. There it is, or one Lee mark. Beautifully done. And uh, it's up to $105 with three days to go. And uh, that's about it. That's just the, 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 the background screen for the, for the website. All right. If, if you, if you haven't, uh, uh, haven't signed up for us yet or joined us here on YouTube, please subscribe. And uh, if you're looking for information and you're a collector, come over to Bitamount and, and use the resources there. I'm 99, most of it's free. We do have the paid side for, for global member pages, which a lot of people are enjoying. We've gotten a lot of positive emails back on it. Uh, but the other stuff, the books and, and the library of books, uh, the image archives, the forum and all that, that's all free. All right. So listen, uh, have a great weekend. Stay safe out there and um, in, enjoy your collecting. And, but do check around because I think you're seeing some, some bargains come up because of the virus. I'm not saying I want everybody to cash in on the virus, but if you're still buying and collecting and trying to entertain yourself, you might find yourself getting some, some rather good buys these days. All right. Have a great weekend, and we'll be back next week with some other videos and so on and so forth. Thank you. Bye-bye.